This is my double batch of rye that's been sprouted and dried in the oven at under 150 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna grind this and do a couple different things with it. In this first one, I'm going to add half rye and half raw milk that's been sitting out on my counter for a while. And then in this one, I'm going to add the rest of the rye and I'm going to make a small beer. Now with a small beer, you're supposed to take the rye before you grind it in the grinder. You're supposed to turn it up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes and stir it in the oven to brown it. But I'm not going to do that this time. It does give it a good taste, but I just want it to be unburnt and low temperature. And I'm going to make... You just leave it in here and you keep adding water and whisking it every day. You cover it most of the time with a cloth and let it sit in there until it's really bubbly and active. And then you bottle it in jars and I put it in the basement for a while, like a month or whatever you want. All right, so I ground all the rye that's been sprouted and dried. I got about half of it in here. And to that, I'm gonna add this quart of raw milk that's been out for like 24 hours, maybe more. And then on this one, I'm gonna add this starter that's been out for 24 hours or more. That's been in my fridge for two weeks. It smells really a lot like yeasty sourdough. So I'm gonna add that into here, then top it off with water and mix it around. And that's gonna be my small beer. And this one's gonna be the regular kishk that I bake in the oven at 145 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the next morning. This is the kishk. You can see how thick it gets. So I'm gonna stir that around nicely and then cover it again and probably put it in the oven later today, which will give it about um, 16, 18 hours that it sat. Usually it's 24. This is the small beer See, it's got all the grains and the starter that was put in at the bottom. And I just whisk it around to get everything moving. And watch it for seven days or 14 days, somewhere in there. Maybe add some more water if necessary. Smell it. Watch the bubbles and decide when I want to put it in jars. This is the small beer going later in the day. You can see it bubbling, it's alive. I leave it off, the uh, cover off, because the wild yeast then from the air comes in and introduces more. It's very active. That's because I had that starter in the fridge for like two weeks. So that already got it going really quick. It smells really good. This is my sprouting situation. I broke my other sprouter. So I decided to just get these lids from Amazon. They're stainless steel surgical steel so they don't rust and they're regular wide mouth ball jars i like this better and my setup is i rinse it three times here and then hold it like at an angle like that and it drains out mostly and then put it in here and i have a plate under there to catch the water and this works out very nicely I rinse them 
in the morning and at night, most of the time. Sometimes I forget, but it's okay. This is my small beer after many days. I can't remember how many days, but it's been a long time. And I'm going to stir it one more time. And then I'm going to filter it through this non-metallic mesh strainer. So it'll leave some bits. I'm going to pour it into these jars and stick it in my basement for a while, covered tightly with the lids. So it will generate some alcohol and get nicer. This is the small beer going. It's been going all day. I got two pints so far. And I'm just being patient because it's kind of clogged the filter, but it's dripping through. And that means it's just going to filter better and it'll be clearer on some of these. Some of these will have more sediment than others, which is cool. So and then I'm going to take this and put it right back in here and I'm going to put more water in and make more with the same stuff. This is a, uh, what I dumped out after it drained. I'm gonna just add more water here. This is the small beer that drained out. You see what it looks like? It's got a little bit of scum stuff. A lot of pretty clear compared to the first couple that looked like a little cloudier. Well, they settled a little bit. They settle into the bottom a little bit. When you drink it, you just don't drink the bottom. Like you see the sediment in this one. So I'm gonna use this one and whatever else I need here, fill them up and put them in the basement for a while. Take a little taste.